All right. And I also spoke with Maya Tafo, who happens to be another dear friend of mine. He has been making waves in the Nigerian fashion industry for over 10 years. This year, during Arise Fashion Week, he encountered a rare opportunity that will change the face of his brand. Let's take a look. Described as the original bespoke fashion tailor for male suits in Nigeria, Maya Tafo caught the attention of the fashion industry early with his revolutionary cutting edge styles. He is not your typical fashion designer with a fashion story behind his brand. Instead, Mai was an economist who managed high profile brands before venturing into fashion design. In 2007, Mai resigned from his marketing job and created a bespoke clothing label, Mai Atafo Inspired, which quickly gained media acclamation by a pioneering clientele mostly made up of celebrities. Four years into creating the bespoke line and from its success, Mai decided to venture into the wedding business and launched a bridal line called Weddings by Mai. Mai has continued to stun the fashion industry with his combination of bespoke male tailoring and captivating wedding dresses in a journey to capture a global audience. Recently, at the just concluded Arise Fashion Week, Maya Tafo reached a milestone in his conquest for global recognition when supermodel Naomi Campbell walked down the runway in one of his stunning creations. Campbell yes. walk for you. Yes, she did. You know what that means? I'm trying to get to terms with what it means and and this whole entirety and the full ramification. I, I don't think I've gotten full grasp of what it means. I wouldn't lie to you. You you, you haven't gotten the full grasp. Full I, I know this is like major, but trying to totally comprehend it in my head is, is just beyond me. Okay, tell me how that happened. Um oh, how did it happen? Definitely wasn't on plan. I mean, from last year, she worked for a few people. I was kind of like scared of the fact of Naomi working for me because like, oh my God, she's going to disrupt my show. How does it work? I mean, this is Naomi, the supermodel. What do you have to do? So I never really asked for it to happen, to be honest, ever. Okay. So I never made an outfit like this is Naomi or anything. She was never in my show plan at because all. Because I know your creative process is very detailed. Yes, some And detail. it's all about your creative process exactly. and nothing more. So I never put that in the picture. So. The moment that I was doing my fitting and I was told, oh, Naomi is doing your show, I'm like, oh, okay. That and put this you was off. my final fitting. I did the fitting on Sunday and I'm doing the fitting on the day of the show. And she so she's doing your show today. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. Great. Um, I don't have any peace for her. <laughs> it was the first thing I said. I have no pieces for her. Like, I have no peace befitting of Naomi. Like, I know my story, so I know how the show is supposed to start and end. I have people in key places. Yes. I'm like, this is not going to work. And Desiree looked at me and said, my... Desiree is our show producer, by yes, the way. Super, producer. Said, Make yeah. it work. I'm like, okay. Okay, there's one outfit. I think this is a Naomi outfit. And someone was going like, oh, let Naomi wear a bride. I'm like, Naomi won't wear a bride for God's sake. Like, yeah, have you seen her walk? You want to hide all that in the dress? Like, please, no, don't do that. And I brought out the piece and she was like, yes, that has Naomi on it. She would love that. I'm like, whew, thank God. So we found a look for Naomi. We found what a look next? for Naomi. That's it. Now, my running order is gone totally berserk because that's not, that was not the starting look or the ending look. And Naomi has to either start your show or end your show. So it's easier to start. But now what happens? Okay. So I'm like, okay, we'll walk, we'll walk through. Line, line, running order is easy. We'll walk through the running yes. order. And so showtime, everyone get dressed and we're getting dressed and like, oh, sorry, Naomi is not doing your show anymore. Well, that's the day before the show or during the day. Everything happened the day that off day. The show. Yeah. Okay, wow. I was told that day she was doing my show. We got the piece for her that day. And showtime, this is like hours later, six hours later, it's like literally going on stage. She's not doing your show anymore. Bring the piece back downstairs and give it to someone. I'm like. Okay, that shattered me a little bit because I already like, hmm, 
you know, I already told a few people that Naomi is on my show. <laughs> How am I going and to show face? Now I think I was gloating like, you know, <laughs> I'm like back to business mode, let's get this thing done. Okay. And she brought this girl and like put the piece on her. And I put the piece on her. She carried it well. Like, okay, great. So this is good. Okay, so let's let's get let's get on. So we started changing, get everyone ready. And she comes back to me about 15 minutes later. 10, 15 minutes later, like, get the piece off that girl. Naomi is doing your show. I'm like, what? Like, get it off now. Like, Naomi doesn't have to say the piece on her. Like, get it off now. And like, okay, piece off. Naomi's doing the show, blah, blah, blah. And I'm taking the piece of that. Get her another piece to wear. I'm like, what? Get her another piece to wear. She must do your show. I'm okay, like, pause here. No, I'm pause, 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 pause. <laughs> Naomi came in yes. and she said, she's not only doing your show, but she also wants the girl that you took That's Desiree her garment now. off. So oh. Desiree is the one that says, take the outfit off the girl. Now get a piece for the girl to wear because the girl must do your show. Okay, okay. I'm okay. like, wow, I have no pieces. Then get a piece. I have no piece. Then get a piece. I'm like, okay, what are we gonna do? And I, okay, guys, just keep doing this. Like, oh, that's a wedding dress we brought. They wouldn't fit on anyone because you don't want to put it in the show again. Put it on her. So yeah, put it on her. We put it on her. It was a bit too long. Might make it work. So I was underneath this gown, stitching things and pinning things. So I just got to walk on the runway. And Naomi comes with her a crew entourage. It's and called. the dress, <laughs> the, the 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 jacket just disappears yeah. and it's all there. Like everyone, go 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 and we get backstage and it was slightly chaotic and my side had done the running order and it, it wasn't working for me like and I wasn't in the mind place to even start thinking of running order because I'm changing shoes for some models everyone's dressed properly and Edward and info comes to me and says is this your collection I'm like oh my god yes it is like, that's in the middle of going mad I'm like yes it is like I'm almost like what's wrong with it <laughs> like, it's like beautiful congratulations you're gonna have a great show I'm like this is just what I did I'm like thank you very much thank you you have no idea what this means to me it's like no this is brilliant well done I'm like great and that was just a little boost that I needed to go like Ugh. you know so went back, sorted everything out, rearranged it, running order, moved people around, blah, 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 blah. And it's now time for the show to start. And Naomi comes out in my outfit and I'm like, I couldn't say a word to it her happened. over time. I couldn't even say hi, I'm a designer. I was like, <laughs> I'm like is this like, really happening? <laughs> like, in what world does this happen? Like, Maya Tafo, you've been doing this for what? 10 years yes, now, consistently. Years, yeah. Did you ever think this was going to oh, happen? Oh no, no. It's, when you put things in your spectrum, right? Like, let's be very honest. OG is one of my thing. Oluchi is one of my thing. Even the possibility of that happening and they're my friends was almost not possible. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And they're my friends. It didn't happen till last year. I'm like, guys, would you wear my pieces? <laughs> I'm, I'm being very frank here. Because it's like, we are friends, but you respect people's craft. Yes, absolutely. Okay? So you don't take your friends for granted. So I'm like, will you guys do this? I'm like, oh yeah, sure, we'll do it. I'm like, thank God, like, yes. So even moving from there, from next, from last year to this year, Naomi, when I, I didn't, mm -mm. I'm like, there's no way. I have to tell you my, there's been a huge improvement from your collection of last year to this year. Mm. Thank I mean, you. I mean, it's the, the, the difference is huge. I mean, it's not only with the jewelry or the velvet, it's the bridal and everything. The whole collection was stunning. Thank you very really. much. I'd love to know, what was your inspiration behind this whole collection? I started with women's wear, not men's wear. Yeah. Every time I work, I start with men's wear and get the women's wear to literally just be similar. So there was less work on the women's wear, to be honest, because I was doing men's wear, replicate. But this time around, I started with women's wear, which is, even for me, it was a bit strange. Stand with women's wear. So I started with women's wear, and the women's wear was getting me really excited, and I started seeing all the colors I put together. And I looked at the men's wear, and I thought, hmm, let's make the men try to uphold what the women's standard is right now so i not went deeper with the menswear so i mean women had metallics and guys had even mercury shirts in the metallics you know so and as that was coming together my head just started to play a game and i realized okay 
The women's collection is called Feminine AF, which, you know, I figured that a woman can wear a man's pants in almost nine different ways than the man can wear it. Really? Yes. I would never have thought so. So a man can wear his bootleg, his skinnies, his slims, but a woman would do those three. Then she could do baggy, which is bang on trend right now. Okay. And baggy yes, is on trend yes. for men. Okay. She could okay. do palazzo, yes. which is bang on trend. She could do a clot. She can do a loose fit. A woman, she could do a pencil. She has like crazy. So in my head, it's like what a man can do with his pants, she can do it nine times better. And that's why, to me, that's the highest level of being feminine, where you can actually rock a man's stuff and kill it. So if you look at the women's where everything was trousers, there was yes. no skirt. It yes. was in the bridal, we bought in the skirt and the dresses. And the dresses. But in the women's collection were all trousers and jackets and shirts in different shapes and forms. And this is the first time I'm doing the women's wear collection that has women in suits all through. Apart from the two other outfits that were just tops. Yes. You know? So it was, for me, it was also different to look at things. And I just saw power women, power women. I have a lot of female friends. And to be honest, when I see them, the thing that comes to me first is not their sexuality of being female. Okay. It's almost the credibility of what they have in the career or what they have in the family or what they have in the business before I realized that they're female. You know what I mean? It's like yes. that comes out first. So I see you and know, oh, OG is a model and she's achieved so much and she's a cast. If I think, okay, she's a woman, so am I supposed to act differently now? No, she's my friend, so I'll talk yes. to her like I talk to my guys. Yes. Because I have that level of respect for her because of you know her craft. And that's what it is. You know, so it was quite interesting even going through the process of creating that. And why not? The men's collection, on the other hand, is called um, Beaumont, uh, a Playboy's wardrobe. Uh, that, that's what it was. I, yes, it was, it was a Playboy's wardrobe. I, and I, I and the funny thing was, is that yes. when I tell people anything, they, they see it immediately. You know, yes. you have guys dressed up a little bit too much, but it's perfect. Yes. You know, unbutton your shirt, you have a Mercury shirt, a metallic shirt and jacket on top of it. Then when you're all clean and dapper, your jacket is double breasted but a bit higher, your three piece is like eight buttons and the waistcoat, you know, and you're wearing cowboy boots or we hand painted a few shoes in silver glitter and stuff. It was stunning. So it was like all that kind of thing. Like, so I look at the, the average man who has achieved success in his career, but enjoys fashion and has money to spend on it. That's what this was about. And who's not scared of his feminine side? Because yes. I think, I, I always say a real man is someone that is not scared of his feminine side. I always he say the same it, thing. Holds it. I always I say, say the same thing. Only a real man can wear pink and wear it right. I always say the Those same thing. Those men that are scared of pink are not real men. That's what it takes. <laughs> Honestly, because you should be able to step into your feminine side and own it. Yes. Right? And not be afraid of what people think or how people will look at you. It was just classified as a, a metrosexual yeah, man. I, I would say real man. I don't want to call him <laughs> metrosexual because he almost put it in that rather, I'm not a metrosexual man. No. You cannot say I'm not a real man if you're a man. Okay. That means you're a chicken. Okay. So okay. why are you scared of pink? Why? Why are you so scared of pink? So there's something in you that is inadequate. That's why you're scared of pink. That's why you're scared of glitter. Yes, absolutely. Because if you're not scared of the feminine side of you and you embrace it, you would also respect a woman in that light and embrace her. And that's how I see it. At Rice Fashion Week, yes. Naomi Campbell is hosting. And the whole theme of the show is to change the narrative of African design or how we look into our creative process here. What do you make of that? I think it's quite interesting. I would have sworn that up to the day that I showed, I would have disagreed, but up until the day you showed, yeah. you would have disagreed with her. When I was doing okay. a fitting, my final fitting, I would okay. disagree with that. But whilst I was there, I totally agree with it because Desiree said something to me. She said, I understand your market here in Nigeria and you guys try to sell your business here. So you are making money, which is good. So you almost have a retail focus in behind your head when yes. you're making your pieces. But she said, this is the one show you should try as much as possible not to try to sell, but build equity. Okay. And when you're building equity, you want people to look at you as a designer, period. Not Africa, not here and there. Now, when you have the editor of Vogue, uh, British Vogue, and you have the editor at large of American Vogue, 
in one room. She said, you have to make it look like Paris. Because that's the epitome of high fashion. Okay. So when they sit down there, they should watch the show and think, this is not Nigeria. This is Paris. This is something that I'm used to see. This is used to the standard I'm used to seeing at the highest level. So do that. And that was a total mind change from what I am used to. And that's when the coin dropped and it made sense. Now, on a good day, I can imagine the number of people that would follow Naomi and look at her page and look at what she's talking about. Yes. And two days ago, they saw her in my piece. Yes. She put herself in my piece on the Instagram story and tagged me. Yes, I saw that. By default, anyone that knows and loves her would go there and click. Now, that gives my brand credibility at that level. I mean, she just finished shooting the Valentino um, campaign in New York, in the train. Like, hello. <laughs> Do you yes, know what I mean? Yes. That literally is that if I saw the Valentino campaign and I'm seeing her in Nigeria and I'm seeing her wearing this, I'll take a second look at that. Because that almost now gives credibility to that designer. Okay. So I think on that level and that level of expo um, um, exposure yes. is very key. Yes. And that's the level where I'll accept it. Okay. Now, on the other hand, they can say, we've been doing this and we're quite good at this. And I totally agree. I always say that when it comes to creativity, I think we can trump anyone in the world because we are damn good at creativity. I, have, I agree with you. But now the next level is how do we get commercial? How do we get production to the point? How do we get business to the point whereby you have a store in New York and it's not in a corner. It is where it is supposed to be. And you have the right backing from people, from the fashion from the fashion investors internationally that want to buy into that brand. Yes. How do we get there? And I think that this is how the conversation is starting. Okay. With things like this, you know. So I would, I would have been oblivious to this two days ago, and I wouldn't lie. Because I know I said some things that were like, why the hell is this happening? But and now, what difference would it make? Okay. You know, so, so, so we have Naomi in your piece. There's an added value to a My Atafo brand. And people what, now follow you and they watch your page. How do you monetize that? How can you monetize that? That's the interesting thing about what you do, first of all, for leverage. Yes. We as Africans, when we get endorsement from international, from people overseas, we appreciate us even more. It's quite sad. It's the truth. It's the reality. I had Oluchi on the program and she said to me, why do we need global recognition? Yes. We absolutely do not need global recognition to know that you are doing good on your yes. own. Yes, and I totally agree with that statement. To know you're doing good on your own, you don't need global recognition. Yeah. And I think that's a, that's a, I almost call it a colonial mentality thing because the yeah. white man actually came and, you know, colonized us. So we always feel they're still better, right? I, I also, when I went to Harvard, I said this thing, like, I think our problem is that we do not use our channels and our platforms to celebrate us good enough. Yes. That's why we always think that we have to look elsewhere. Because I swear down, if I make the news in the US, I make the news on the continent. If I make the news on the continent, I barely make the news. I have to facilitate that news by myself because we don't celebrate ourselves. Yes. That's the problem. So I'm going off to Harvard and people are not carrying this on blogs because that's, that's a major deal. It's big, it's huge, but no, I went to speak at Harvard. And a blog, I sent out a press release. Okay. And a blog said, what do we get in return? I'm like, Jesus Christ. So we do not appreciate our we don't own. Appreciate, so we don't appreciate it. When I went to Harvard, I said that thing. We should make noise when we do something amazing. Yes. If you think my is the most amazing suit maker out of the continent. Put that in every single line after you call his name. Yes. Forget the fact that you should get paid for it. If it's a reality, put it there. And more people read that thing, they will realize that, okay, he has something and they look into the brand. But we don't do that for ourselves. So I, I said something and I said, instead of trying to waste time and money trying to change the narrative, we should just narrate in the first place. We should narrate in Just the narrate. first place. Just say it. Okay. If you feel the person is good, if you feel your work is good, 
Say it and say it and say it and say definitely it realize that people actually look at you a second time and go like, you know what? This person is good. Don't don't wait for other people to say it yes. and say the wrong thing and you change. So I, I think that what we're doing with Naomi is just letting international know that this it's not letting us know. It's letting international know that we can kick ass and we've been doing this for a long time. Yes. I mean, oh. I was speaking to Andre Leon um, Tally. Tally today and he was like, you made this bag in Nigeria? I'm like, yes. And that's I your carried, brand. Yes, that's that's what, my your brand. brand. He carried it, he looked at it, looked inside, it looked outside the bag. It had me carried on my shoulder, on my back. He took pictures of me doing all that and he couldn't believe it. He said, I'll give you a criticism. He carried the bag. It's just a bit heavy. I'll make it lighter. He said, don't make it lighter. They're Louis Vuitton bags that weigh more than this. And that's part of the quality because it's real leather. Amazing. Do you get what I mean? And he himself doesn't even believe that we know him. I'm like, we know you, sir. It's like, no, you don't. I'm like, yeah, we do. You're yeah, we love fashion. We research fashion and we adore so that, I mean, fashion. That's why so. I like the idea of what's going on. Yeah. And I think, I hope it will cascade down to over designers actually feel more confident in their ability, you know, and bring it to the fore, you know, and, and it will be good for all of us at the end of the day. All right. So now we have Naomi Campbell here and she's added value to our content. Everyone knows that we are, we have this amazing creative talent like you and we have models out of Africa that are beautiful. Yeah. What's next for Africa? What's next? I mean, it goes to your other question. I think I deviated a little bit. How do you monetize this? Yes. How do you take it to the next level? How do you take it to the I, next I, level? I think that when it comes to managing a brand, first of all, it's nice to build equity because it's hard to build equity overnight, except you have like major moves, right? And if you build equity, it's not to ramp up whatever you're going to do underneath it to get to that point. So for me, it's a case of what are you going to do if somebody wants those pieces and they want them now? You have to think of ready to wear. How would you to do To the that? quality and to the standard you've created one. Which is our problem. That's why I've not gone ready to wear. Because it's, it's the quality and the standard is difficult. But now you have to invest in that. You have to invest in that in such a way that if it is possible to get a foreign investor, you do that. Now, I'm looking into that. Do you get what I mean? It's almost good to be maybe slightly easier now that Naomi has won it. It's easy that like she knows me. Could I reach out to her tomorrow and say, you know, hey, this is what I'm trying to do with the brand. And it may come easy to people like that. I know a venture capitalist here and there, you yes. know, shoot this mail to this person, you know, you never know. I know a fashion fund somewhere that looking at something, there's something in the IMF looking at this, okay, try that out. With an endorsement from someone like that, they will look at your brand a second time. So it's now time to look at the bigger picture to see how you can get funding and expertise to push that. And that's what I'll be looking at right now. So the monetizing wouldn't happen overnight or happen next month. But in the long run, say in the next six months to a year, you would definitely see the difference. This whole initiative has been a win-win for all of us. I That's think so. what you would say. All I right. think so. Well. And there was something I know, and I, I'm going to say this because it, it, it was shocking to me. When Naomi got into my piece and was about to hit the runway, she did something before she turned. She did the sign of the cross twice. I found that really shocking. Like, I, you can't probably count how many runways <laughs> she's She always been says on. it. She's always nervous right before the runway. Like, and she did that in Lagos. You can think, <laughs> oh, Lagos is like, oh, wherever. You get what I mean? Yeah. But she did that. So it means a lot. So I just, to me, felt like whatever platform you are on, give it your all. Yeah. Because that's, that's something I picked. I mean, she called on the Lord before she stepped on that runway. And you could think that, I could think, oh, this is Lagos, whatever, I'll do whatever. They'll still scream anyway, because we'll scream anyway. Yes. But no, she did that. Yes. And it was, for me, that was a lesson immediately. That no matter how big you get, you know, just, you know, give your best on any platform that is honored to have you on it. And it was a huge learning. I've been opening my eyes since that day and been watching us and them. Yes. <laughs> I could say, and just trying to learn even more. And my post went out that day, and the first thing I learned a lot.
was the first line in my thank you to her eyes, honestly. Maya Tafo, it's been a pleasure it's having you on the program today. With you. <laughs> and please don't forget me when you become this magnificent ah, <laughs> <laughs> designer. Pop the OG, we go like, now we're not friends anymore. My business this time my, around. My, <laughs> we are still friends no matter okay, what. It's on record, Do eh? It's on record. <laughs> okay, good stuff. <laughs> I wish you all the best Thank and you congratulations. Very much, Huge Thank you congratulations. Very much. Thank you very much. I thoroughly wow. enjoyed that. That's great. That was such OG. a roller coaster. Fantastic <laughs> job, Yeah, but you, you see, um, I like the way uh, Maya, Tafu, and yourself, the two of you, how you emphasize Naomi Campbell's star power. Mm. Yes. You know, the, what is emerging as uh, the Naomi Campbell phenomenon. Yes. You know, she was the main attraction at the RISA Fashion Week, even during the discussion sessions. Mm. And uh, what she's been able to do with her career is truly phenomenal. Yes. She's the big icon of... Uh, inclusivity, diversity in the fashion world, her confidence, her charisma, you know, and even what she's trying to do to encourage a lot of uh, younger models in uh, Africa. But you are a super model yourself. Yeah. Uh, how do you guys, how do you guys, how do you guys, how do you guys do it? Because <laughs> it's like when you get onto the wrong way, something changes. Yeah, yeah. So you know, I've seen you too, you know, doing this, and I say, ah, <laughs> is this the same old joke it's way that I know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the whole idea for that interview, the fact that um, Naomi walked for his collection, is such a huge deal because obviously it's huge global recognition for him, and he talked about how he could monetize it and what it will do for his brand. So the fact that he, you know, had that a rare opportunity for uh, Naomi to be on, on, yeah. <laughs> on his um, on his runway and posting up his pictures on Instagram and you know getting it in Vogue magazine. Mm. It's just a starting point for him. But he, he also talked about yes, he's he does, so, he's amazing. So his collection yeah. was wonderful. He had you know um, ladies in pants and then wedding dresses and also like a Playboy um, collection for and his men suit. Uh, my Tafu seems to have the uh, you know his signature. Uh, design now, yes. those colorful jackets. Yes. I see uh, Governor Select, you know, a oh, lot of yes. prominent uh, yes. Nigerians, yes. you know, so he's been able to establish his own brand. Yes. And that's a, a great achievement. In yes. 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 Definitely come oh. a long way.